Welcome back to the workshop. This week, Steve and I are gonna be here sharpening Tonto blades and teaching you a couple things to keep in mind to make sure that your Tonto stays razor sharp. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's get into, so the ones I planned on sharpening, uh, just because they're pretty different, were this vector and, uh, and the bailout here. Yeah, you mentioned one of the main things to keep in mind is to, you want to leave this tip uh, sharp and defined, yep. not roll over it. And on the bailout, it's a little bit less defined because there's no, there's no rib or you know, thick spot in the... In yeah, the this one has a, a constant distal taper the whole, you know, and, and primary all the way up, mm -hmm. as opposed to the CRKT here, you can see this one, you know, you have a primary comes up, then there's that transition, that transition, and then you have a second transition or a second primary for the actual um, front edge, I guess you would call the, the tanto yeah. or whatever, the, yeah. the secondary edge up there, or the second edge up there. This one just goes all the way out. Yep. So there's a pretty good difference there. So if I'm gonna sharpen this, uh, we've got a couple of things to look for. The recurve and the transition and the fact that these are two different angles. I think we measured this one, very specifically this knife, a while ago. Mm -hmm. And it was about 14 degrees back in the recurve section and 18 degrees at the Tonto section. Yes. I would think that, that these are sharpened by hand. Um, and the bevel height is the same, which is a sign of a really good sharpener to be able to match those at the transition point yeah. with an angle change. They did, a, they did a good job on that one. But how would you go about sharpening this? This is 20 CV, it's a hard super steel. What, uh, what would you do? So the, the, the recurve presents an issue. <clears throat> Something on a, if you're just using a diamond plate or a wet stone, um, you know, rigid surface, you're gonna have a really hard time getting up inside that, that recurve. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna have to really work on mm -hmm. the edges of the plate, which you're gonna wear the edges down and it's just not real consistent. Um, what I pre would prefer was one, would be to either use a flexible belt you know, a belt that will actually flex as you're going over it and it stays inside that um, yeah. that recurve or use a round ceramic rod yeah. like we have on um, the field hones and stuff. So now you can come in and being that it's basically line contact over the top of that, yeah. we come in and just nice and light, we don't have a large surface. So we just come in and use that rod and then stop right at that transition point. So this one you got to pay a little bit of attention to. And you're just lifting off right there. Yep. And then the same thing on the other side, we just come back in. Will that ceramic actually work up a burr? Yes, it will. Yeah. And as you, cause we're on the um, ribbed section of the ceramic now, which increases the surface pressure. Mm -hmm. So once you- Oh, so it acts it like a little bit more coarse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll rotate it over to the fine section where there is no ribbing. And now you come back in and just very light strokes. And alternating sides. And alternating sides, yeah. We're just trying to take that little burr off that we created. And just keep lightening your pressure as you go. And that'll help get you into those recurves. And that's not just for this particular knife. Any knife with a recurve, um, a round ceramic rod, or you know a different shape where you can actually get inside that recurve. You know it could be a triangle. Yeah, it's just really hard on a like on yeah. a square surface. Yeah. You know, Spiderco has their Sharp Maker, which is triangle rods. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the, really good for yeah the triangles. The triangles work really well for you know if you use the, the actual point of the triangle. Mm -hmm. That would work really well for coming in there also. Mm -hmm. And then you can also continue up onto the the second edge past that transition point. Now we're just going to start at the transition off there. Yeah. And we'll do the same thing we did before. So basically when you're doing a, any kind of a tanto that you want to maintain that transition point is you're going to treat it like two separate knives. You're going to come in, you're going to sharpen, um, I guess the first edge, and then you'll come in and sharpen the second edge. Yep. What you don't want to do is come through, whether that's on a belt or a ceramic, you don't want to come through and just continue to just keep rolling through it. Because what that's going to do is just round that transition off then you lose that nice. Yeah, that's the whole benefit of the Tonto. Sharp, yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier when people would bring them to us and it's like, okay, I got to remove a bunch of material here and here to get those two points to move or meet because people have been bringing them through and just rolling through and they gotcha. just round that off. Gotcha. 
So yeah, treat them like two separate knives. Come in, you know, like this one would work very well here. Come in, sharpen, and then you can use the guide, and then you come back in and sharpen the gotcha. yep. second edge. So yeah, just treat them like two separate knives, and they'll be fine. Cool. Well, and then I gotta test your work on the uh, on the vector from earlier. All right. In the recurve section, all the way through and out to the tip. Wow. Just remember, when you're sharpening a Tonto, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, sharpening is the same as any other knife, with the exception of the transition point. Make sure you stop on the transition point and treat each edge as its own knife. That could mean that there's two different angles, two different shapes or profiles. On this bailout, they're both flat or straight edges. Uh, you can sharpen those on most types of sharpeners. On the vector, uh, there's a recurve section and a radius section. On a recurve section, or with any recurve knife, use a rounded abrasive, something like a ceramic rod, or we talk about Spider Coast, Sharpmaker has those triangle uh, those triangle rods, uh, you can use the edges of those to sharpen inside of a recurve as well. Again, treat those as two separate blades and make sure you line up that transition point with the place that you're stopping and transitioning your sharpening. Thanks for watching. Uh, our two giveaway winners this week are below. Get in touch with us, info at derex.com, and we'll send you guys the guided field sharpener so you can sharpen tontos, recurves, and all your knives. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.